here's one for you. Why does the current Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack sell in the US with an advertised range of 107 miles per charge, while a seemingly identical car sold in the UK is advertised as having a 155 mile range, and in Japan as having a 174 mile range? Is it because of some weird change in design? Is one car more powerful and thus less efficient than the other? Or is it something to do with automakers trying to pull the wool over consumers' eyes and make a car appear better than it really is? The answer to all of those is no, but I'll give you the real reasons right next. Stay where you are. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, your tame Brit, and today I'm going to explaining why electric cars, well, all cars actually, are advertised in different markets with different ranges or fuel economy figures. While I've touched on this before, I've been inundated lately with questions from car buyers confused about why I prefer to reference US Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, fuel economy figures in my shows, and why cars in their home nation or market are often advertised with ranges or fuel economies different to those quoted. To explain this all, I'm going to first cover how fuel economy tests and mileage tests are carried out. While you might be forgiven for thinking it involves someone getting into a fully charged electric car or filled up internal combustion engine vehicle and driving it until it runs out of power, noting the number of miles traveled, the amount of energy used, and then calculating the average fuel economy, it's not how it works. All fuel economy figures are actually derived in a laboratory. Yep, that's right. When you buy a brand new Nissan Leaf, for example, with an EPA range of 107 miles and an NEDC range of 155 miles, you're not actually buying a car that someone has driven for the distances advertised. Instead, you're buying a car that's been certified as having undergone a series of laboratory tests, or rather, a reference car has, in which a predetermined set of driving actions have been performed while the car has been strapped onto a dynamometer or bobbling road. The tests, there are usually three or four, are designed to mimic specific driving situations, such as the stop and go traffic of a morning commute or the free flowing jaunts to the shops at the weekend. Each, depending on the test cycle and the market you're in, can last from anything for a few minutes in length to just over 20 minutes or so. And during them, data is collected from the car's onboard computer system to determine just how much energy has been used. After all the tests have been carried out, the figures are then fed into a computer, which then calculates maximum range and fuel economy using a complex formula. So far, so good. But the tests themselves, which I should point out, are often carried out by the automakers and then certified by the relevant body in the market where the car will be sold, are not set by the automakers. They're set by the regional or national body charged with making sure that vehicle fuel economy is represented safely and fairly. In the US, that job falls to the US EPA. The European Union sets the tests that are used for European market cars. And in Japan, the country's government sets the test cycles that each car must go through. Yet, while there are multiple different fuel economy test cycles around the world, most of them are far from representative of real world driving. For example, the Japanese test cycle is particularly low speed, meaning cars tested under it are being driven far slower than they might be on public roads and as such reports a far better fuel economy than you might in the real world. European tests, the new European driving cycle, are similarly optimistic about test results, giving cars apparent ranges that are far larger than real world averages. But the US EPA test, for now at least, is the most realistic and can sometimes even err on the side of giving conservative results. And that's why I, and most in the automotive world, tend towards EPA figures as a benchmark for real world figures. Now, of course, I've simplified this incredibly, but I should note here that test cycles are always evolving. 10 years or so ago, the US EPA test wasn't anywhere near as accurate or representative of real world driving as it is today. And in Europe, the NED test cycle has proven so inaccurate and unreliable that there's a new fuel economy standard coming online this year for Europe called the Worldwide Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. And for those countries that currently follow NEDC, that means in the next year or so, cars may suddenly appear to receive worse ratings than they once did. But it doesn't mean that the car will be able to travel less far or get worse efficiency in the real world. Instead, it just means that real world efficiency and test cycle efficiency should be coming closer together. Which leaves me with one final question. Why automakers use test cycle figures are notoriously inaccurate? Well, 
that's down to the governments and approval agencies, not necessarily automakers. You see, automakers use the appropriate local test cycle for their local sales, firstly because the official rating system, and secondly, that's because it's what everyone else uses. Any automaker which chooses not to use the local efficiency rating and instead chooses to represent real-world range or economy risks losing out to the competition. Here, I should note that there are some healthy, refreshing examples. Renault, for example, always quotes NEDC range and real-world day-to-day range, with the latter being expressed as a variance between X and Y miles, or kilometers, per charge, depending on weather conditions, driver skills, and road conditions. Should more automakers do this? Absolutely. But many don't. And until they either choose to or have to, if you're in the market for a new car, you should probably look to US EPA test ratings for now as the best and most accurate guesstimate of what you can expect your new car to do. Does that all make sense? Do the different fuel economy ratings seem clearer to you? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and help keep those wind turbines spin by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Thanks for watching me and until next time, hug a tree. <laughs> Bye.